Hey there Aquarius, thank you for joining me. I'm Infinity and this is your new moon through full moon uh, on the 28th reading. We'll do a new one for the full moon. So this will take you through the 13th, which is today. Happy new moon. And uh, this will take you through the full moon. And we're gonna do a really interesting read today. I got a couple new uh, Oracle decks and we're going to be getting into a couple of them today. The first one is uh, the Kim Krantz Archetypes Oracle and uh, the next one is Sacred Geometry. This is a Sacred Geometry deck and this deck um, with uh, the Archetypes Oracle is I'm only taking out and we're only going to use the um, the cards, they, they're they separated into categories, the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiation. So for this read, for all of these new moon readings, we're just getting into the cards that are the selves and, um, and just taking from that pile to see what we get for understanding what part of ourself needs to come out at this time, needs some uh, extra attention, or we need to honor, whatever, however that comes out. And then, like I said, we have these really cool sacred geometry cards. Um, it gets into all sorts of stuff with these. I really dig them. They're pretty new. Both of these decks are really new. Even this deck, the Moonology deck, is really new to me, although I have done several readings so far. Um, I think a new moon and a full moon, or a couple full moons and a new moon um, with this Moonology deck. I really, really like it. And now what we're gonna do is, this is my Angel Tarot, and again, just a portion of it. This is just a small little stack. It is the major arcana portion of the Angel Tarot. So we're going to be getting one uh, major arcana card, one moonology card, one uh, sacred geometry card, and one card for the self. So without further ado, let's get going here. Which one are we going to start with? We're going to start with the moonology deck. I had a feeling. And... If you're interested in working with me, um, private week. Check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org for private reads, energy healing for you, your animals, your children, and um, really awesome in-depth uh, ascension coaching and um, a program called Evolve Now and a new healing um, session that I, uh, that's called Renew Now. So, oop, looks like we've got our, our card here, Aquarius. So let's see what we got here. A time for healing. A time for healing, Aquarius. Wow. It's a really good time for healing at any time for sure. But it's interesting, starting with New Moon, getting this message a time for healing. So let's pop over to Sacred Geometry. See what we get here with the Sacred Geometry cards. And we'll put everything together. <sighs> okay, here's our card, Aquarius. Ooh, it's even kind of sticky. Vitality, card number 47 with vitality, energize your whole being. Oh, I like that. So healing, vitality, energize your whole being. Oh, we're gonna get into that one. So let me grab the book here. Card number 47. Um, what, am I reading that wrong? Yeah, card number one. I just passed, there we go. <laughs> Okay, vitality, energize your whole being. I feel energized, healthy, and well. Vitality has shown up today to remind you of the importance of keeping an active mind and an active body and staying mentally and physically strong. 
To be able to survive in our everyday lives, we have to maintain a certain energy level. When we are refreshed and energized, we are less likely to suffer from mental and physical illness and as we keep our minds and bodies active and positive. Our physical and spiritual temples gain vitality, health, and wellness. The fitter and more active we are, the more endurance we will have. And sacred geometry. The geometry of this call card is called the rhombic decahedron. It has 12 congruent two figures that are the same shape and size rhombic phases. And it is duality, sorry, it is a duality of one of the Arche, Archimedean solids, which is the cubicohedron. This particular geometry is seen in the garnet crystal, and garnet is the stone of life force and vitality. Let me take, show you that again. Really cool sacred geometry there. Um, practical application. Take the time to walk, ride a bike or swim, practice meditation or yoga, spend time with friends and laugh or find some solitude to nurture yourself within and comfort and the comfort of your own space. By staying energized and balanced on all levels, we gain a stronger connection to the earth and a stronger connection to spirit. The pathway from base to crown opens, allowing for clear channeling while being able to ground spiritual energies into the physical body. And the card numerology is one, and the crystal sin, um, suggestions are garnet, ruby, shiva lingam, uh, cuprite, or pyrite. And again, that is vitality. So there we go. So really interesting. Vitality coming out with a time of healing. So this is definitely speaking to healing um, energy, um, connecting with nature for energy healing, uh, connecting with Gaia for energy healing, energize the whole being. Um, it spoke here base to crown. So when your life force is, is when you're tapping in with your life force, and I work with all this stuff, very deeply in, in the healings that I do. Um, so I, I know a bit a bit about this stuff and for sure the more um, energized and engaged your physical body is, the more the more you're connected to it definitely um, works on re-energizing the body, grounding the body, releasing energy that doesn't belong, whether you're cognizant of doing that or not, it's definitely better to be intentional about it. But, um, but yeah, so there we go. Time for healing and vitality. Let's move on here to the self cards of the, um, the archetype Oracle by Kim Kranz. If you're familiar with the wild unknown tarot, she's the one who makes that. So she made this she spent a lot of time. It comes with this awesome guidebook. I, I mean, if you're into archetypes at all or, um, this might really be something for you. And, oh, <laughs> that one wants to come out. There we go. What do we have here? The Sustainer, card number 24. That, let me get this straight here. <laughs> there we go. The Sustainer. Awesome card. And I've just done one of these, re one reading with this deck so far for myself. It was to separate all the different piles, um, the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiations, and then pick one from each. Really, really awesome. And so um, when it came to what I was going to do with this new moon reading, it was we're staying with the selves and getting a little bit of everything. So moving right over here to the sustainer, card number 20. Oh no. I'm moving this wrong. I, I, wait a second, I'm all confused with these friggin' room, 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 Roman numerals. <laughs> Can't even say it. 
Where is, there it is. Oh my goodness. I was so seeing that backwards. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the sustainer, yeah, card number, right? Am I reading this right? I'm sorry. I'm just like, I confused myself and then I'm like, did I confuse myself? Yeah, it was card number 24. What was I, whatever. Whatever. Okay, so <laughs> the sustainer, Aquarius. The sustainer. The sustainer, the second archetype in the trio of existence, works behind the scenes tending to the tasks of life. They cultivate gardens, pay bills, keep the meals warm, and the mouths sweetly fed. The sustainer is at peace in the process of life, knowing there is no start or finish to humble yet meaningful tasks. They have a natural inclination to nourish others, to... Um, archive to preserve earth's resources to consider environmental impact to see their role in the divine cycle of life it's common for the sustainer to become overworked lending to resentment their tasks aren't glamorous and therefore the sustainer rarely receives the credit or attention the sustainer longs to hold um wait Oh, that was a period there. Sorry. The sustainer rarely receives the credit or attention. Uh, the sustainer longs to hold things in place so badly, especially relationships, that they resist necessary change. Take time with this archetype. It is within us all and needs our love. So, when light, abundant, generous, supportive, reliable, when dark, overworked, uh, resentful, trapped, tired, and go deeper, lake, swim, fish, shoot, and Demeter. Okay, and then contemplate what truly sustains you. Make a list. Notice how simple yet powerful those things are and spend some time tending to them contemplate what truly sustains you and make a list what truly sustains you what really feeds your body your soul your spirit your energy and notice how simple yet powerful these things are in your life and are you giving that self that to yourself okay so this is all very much in alignment with paying attention to you and taking care of your energy, noticing what your output is versus your input. Um, take note of the difference between maintaining and sustaining. Which action, action describes your life more accurately? Whoa, maintaining or sustaining? And this is the sustainer, sustaining. So, like main maintenance is something like to me that is very mechanical, but sustaining is with energy and passion and it's not so, it's feeling what needs tending to instead of just going, oh, it's the first of the month and we're going to do this. That's maintenance, you know? So it's a little bit different. Okay, so very interesting here. Interesting with these colors being very uh, similar to the heal time for healing, vitality, and the sustainer. So this is really speaking so far. Let's see what the archangel have to say with the major arcana. But so far this is really speaking, Aquarius, to... Um, paying attention to your energy, what's going on with your energy levels, how are you feeling in your body, and seeing what sustains you, what gives you vitality, what gives you energy, um, and, and spending some time sustaining yourself in the ways that is good for you. Um, and maybe kind of doing a little, this list idea is great. What sustains you? What feeds your soul? What makes you feel good? There's our card. Um, and how's that going? <laughs> okay, let's see here. The lovers with Archangel Raphael 
And he's our healing angel he's coming in to say, before people get too far ahead of themselves with this lover's card, I'm coming in to tell you, I work very closely with Archangel Raphael my healings, by the way, so we're very, very tight. Um, intimate relationships, carefully weigh your decisions, good health. So he's really speaking to this health part here. There's a little blurb here at the bottom. You can see that. There we go. Card, get my face out of there so we can see. There we go. So, yeah, he's coming in right away to say, Time to pay attention to your health, your energy, how you feel, what's going on with your energy centers, your chakras. Um, seek out really good ways to clear your energy and. Um, uh, there is an ebook that I that I have on my website. It's it says or it's called um, psychic. What is psychic attack and how to clear negative energy? And I would really recommend taking a look at that Aquarius or whoever's watching this, and and note that and maybe it could be a, a, a I, I'm hearing like for myself. My activity level, especially outside over these last few months, or even those last, you know, maybe this last year with COVID, but definitely these last couple months with winter, especially, you know, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that, um, you know, really going outside and being active in that way maybe took a, a, took a dive because of weather. If you're somebody who's just really not into being outside in the cold, um, I'm kind of hearing it could be circumstance, but it's really time to think about your energy and what's going on there and do a little inventory about what you're doing to keep yourself healthy and really decide for yourself like, huh, like I'm hearing for some people like this would be an excellent time to, if not set it up, but consider doing some, some moderate to deep energy work and spiritual connections um, because, well, any kind of real healing involves the whole everything, mind, body, spirit, um, energy, all that good stuff. And, and this time period is definitely, um, you know, we're in Pisces. We have this new moon in Pisces. We really want to think about um, love in different ways. Lovers coming through. Um, let me see if there's anything else. But loving ourselves, really connecting with ourselves, our inner child, our um, our bodies. I do have a couple of meditations I put out a couple weeks ago. Inter healing and integrating the inner child and then body love and connecting with your guardian angel that's popping into my head here and when it comes to relationships I'm he also hearing do some inventory let's be real about I call it the real feels do some real feels about your relationships and the what's going on there. What's is there balance? Is there more output, more input? Where where's what's going on with all that? So I'm hearing that here. But overall, a time for healing coming through here um, with this balsamic moon and vitality, the sustainer, this is all, you know, health, health is coming through a couple times. This is um, really speaking to your energy, Aquarius. So if your energy's been low, if you've been feeling kind of down or achy or unmotivated, this is your wake up call to be like, you got to do something about this. You got to change this. And if you're having a really hard time, like getting up and motivated, then it's time maybe to seek some outside help. I would love to to help you if that's in the in the cards for us. Please again check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org, and see if there's something there that that is of interest to you. And um, that's it, guys. Healthy energy inventory, all that good stuff. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.